unfortunately, research has found something like 72% of entrepreneurs have some kind of mental health issue. Depression, anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's... It's high. It, That's a high it's number. High. I mean, it, I, and this is coming from the the therapist, the previous right. therapist. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know. It's a high it, number. It's yeah. a high number, and it's it's a tragedy, really. It's because like we are passionate. We're yes. dedicated. <laughs> We're working so hard, right? Right. And we've got to ha- figure out a way to make this balanced. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Terry Cardula with Talking with Terry TV. Everyone wants to get healthy in 2024. It's a new year, new you, right? But when it comes to business owners and entrepreneurs, we often ignore our health at all costs. This hurts our bodies and our bottom lines. Certified classical homeopath and metabolic coach Amber Curry is here with more. Welcome. Hi, Terry. <laughs> Good to see you here. Now, before we came in here and sat down, we actually went and made brain tea. So mm-hmm. we grab your recipe for brain tea, okay? It's delicious. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. Cheers. All right, let's dive in. Let's hear more about what we can be doing because I will tell you, I've been guilty of this as an entrepreneur. You go, go, go. Um, and sometimes... You are so busy, you skip a meal, you may may not make the right choices. And so I do think that um, entrepreneurs are probably the worst (laughs) at taking health seriously. So what can you say, you're saying to me that health and wealth is connected. How so? And let's dive in. Well, the connection between health and wealth has actually been understood since ancient times, Terry. And actually, modern research has backed that up, that people who are healthier and live longer, obviously, they tend to make more money over the course of their lifetime. But like you said, I mean, if you have a business that you're passionate about Mm -hmm. or you just really love your work, hopefully both. It's hard to fit in time for yourself. It's hard to get yourself on the calendar, right? Those meals, the exercise, mindfulness practices, like we all kind of know what we should be doing. And a lot of us just haven't prioritized it. And unfortunately, this can impact our bottom line because if you are not taking care of your gut and your brain and your body and your immune system, you're not gonna be as sharp as you can be. And we all wanna be as sharp as we can be. Yeah. 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 And you're gonna be less energetic than Mm -hmm. you should be. And I mean, you might be crankier. (laughs) (laughs) And no one wants a cranky person. Well, Well, and I and I remember I had um, years and years ago I had a really great mentor Mm -hmm. who told me he's like I was pushing it. I was pushing it. I was going, going, going. We were in this incredible like growth spurt at the other company, Mm -hmm. and he says to me, Terry, he's like, you've got to slow down. He's like, you've got to slow down. He's like, and and these words when he spoke these just anchored in for me. He said. You are nothing without your body. Mm. You gotta take care of your body. You gotta take care of your health. And it was one of those moments I was like, oh gosh, you're right. Like I gotta have some sort of balance between go mode and you know take care of my, my physical being, right? Right, right. I mean, so not only can you not enjoy what mm-hmm. you've built, mm-hmm. if your health is not very good, yeah. right? You get really distracted by having to take care of yourself and spend your time, you know what I mean? Being sick, yeah. going to doctors trying to figure all that out. The other thing is like, it can feel like you're not working on your business, that you're taking time away from your business Mm -hmm. if you are busy taking care of yourself. But really, it's the responsible and moral thing to do, actually, to prioritize your health and put yourself on the calendar. Otherwise, I mean, you've got people depending on you, your employees, Mm -hmm. your family, right? What happens if you're not able to do what you need yeah. to do to take care yeah. of your business and keep it thriving and surviving and, you know, growing and yeah. all of that. Well, you know, um, I, and I, th- I think I've mentioned this before, and, and that is I was um, on a, I was running a marathon at one point, and the guy that we befriended on the trip, his name was Steve, and he uh, was trying to break three-hour marathon, which mm-hmm. is incredible, mm-hmm. but he's like, I can't break it. And his coach... What his coach said to him really um, has been powerful, and I've uh, implied this on many different aspects, Mm -hmm. and that is he said, I want you to take a one-minute walk break every 10 minutes. 
And and Steve was like, oh my gosh, this is going to add so much time to the end marathon. This is actually not going to work. And he's like, fine, I'll try it your way, right? What happened was not only did he take off all the extra time that he was adding, but he was actually took off in another 30 minutes. So he actually broke his time by taking one minute walk breaks by, and he was able to do a marathon in two and a half hours. And here's what I think it is. And you could probably, you know, validate what, you know, what is happening, but it's allowing the brain to take a break. It's allowing the body to take a break and we're more efficient, right? When we go back at it, right? Would you add to that? Like what was happening for that? Well, I mean, I love the idea that he had him walking particularly. Yeah. yeah. Right? He didn't just tell him to take a break yeah. or take rest days or whatever. Yeah. So there's something really cool that happens for our bodies when mm -hmm. we walk. Mm -hmm. There's been some research about that that finds that it's really useful for our circulation, that it helps calm us down, that it helps get our adrenal and other hormones, you know, more, more where they need to be mm -hmm. so that we can be in it for the long haul. Yeah. Right. So I just think that like if we apply that to our lives, right, mm -hmm. we think that, like you said, like stepping away from our business is actually going to hurt our business. But if we can think about it as like, this is actually going to propel me forward. This is going to actually make me more effective, more efficient, more powerful, more dynamic, whatever it is, sure. more focused in whatever I'm creating, it allows us to take Right. That is a priority. Yeah. Make that a, as a priority. Make it a priority. I mean, we none of us want to be that old stereotype, yeah. right, of the person that is like a wild success in business and works and works and works for, you know, X many decades, retires and then drops dead. Right. Right. I mean, right. It, I mean there's a, it's a stereotype for a reason. Yeah. Because it's happened so many times because they did not prioritize we're going to call them walk breaks or whatever. I mean, yeah, they could yeah. be literal walk breaks. But, yeah, yeah. Right? Those the, the 10 minutes where you're taking care of you, you're bringing it back together, you're eating healthy meals. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also want to pay attention to our mental and emotional health too, okay? Because if you're an entrepreneur, you're probably working really long hours, right? Yeah. And yeah. a lot of it is solitary. Mm -hmm. And that's just the nature of the game, mm -hmm. right? And unfortunately... Research has found something like 72% of entrepreneurs have some kind of mental health issue. Depression, anxiety, yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's high, it, that's a high it's number. High. I mean, it, I, and this is coming from the, the therapist, the previous right. therapist. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know. It's I, a high number. It's yeah. a high number and it's it's a tragedy really. It's because like we are passionate, we're yes. dedicated, <laughs> we're working so hard, right? Right. And we've got to ha figure out a way to make this balanced. And honestly, the entrepreneur that's working 40 hours a week manages to carve out time for friends and family and exercise and self-care is often going to outperform in their field the person who's strung out and working 60 hour weeks and then just crashes. Yeah. Right? They, okay. She's speaking some truth bombs. So take that in. Listen up, right? <sighs> okay. So for the person that's reluctant because they, they are so afraid that if they're not working a thousand hours a day <laughs> that, they, that they're going to miss out. Where do we start? Where, what, what can you, how, where do we start in this process? Great question. So where you could start is schedule a meeting where instead of sitting at a desk, you guys are taking a walk. Mm. Okay. It's Colorado, so it's cold outside, but it's gorgeous. I was sitting in your green room looking outside at the snow. I mean, T one of my one of my um, old old um, power partners. Mm -hmm. When we would get together, she's like, I it, any one on one meetings. Yeah. She's like, meet me at this corner here, <laughs> and she would walk with you. And so she would did all of her networking walking. Yeah. I loved it so much. I modified it. Oh. So in the What'd summertime, in the summertime, when people want to network, me, I come to the pool. <laughs> it's probably not as as exciting as it's the long break. <laughs> You are bold, lady. <laughs> know, right? Let's have a networking meeting in our bathing suits. You know, it's going to be real. <laughs> <laughs> Women, you know what I'm saying? Like ones that I know and like and trust, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, like, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, you're outside getting some vitamin D, right? right? Like there's a lot Thank of you that. for justifying this. <laughs> Absolutely. But I mean. Okay. But the walk breaks were better. Yeah. yeah it, it's all good. You mm -hmm. know, if you can add an element of fun yeah. in, that's also really yummy for yeah. the quality of your life. and. There's something about pleasure, mm -hmm. okay? Like we kind of downplay the role yeah. of pleasure yeah. in, in health and in our lives sometimes, yeah. especially like when it's about getting stuff done, yeah. right? Yeah. Like you've got to find ways to 
bring that in, bring that into your life to have balance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, the walking idea, even if it's just around the hallways. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's going to be, you're going to, you're going to, um, mm, here's something fun. Here's a statistic that was, I think Stanford did this research. They found that people's creativity went up 60% if they walked. Wow. If they walked. We can do this. We can do this, right? Can and walking, this. is there a certain amount of time of walking? Like, Well, there are lots of guidelines. Um, so, you know, 10,000 steps is the number that we've all been trained. So this is fun trivia. Okay, it turns out that this number is like completely arbitrary. It's not based on any kind of research. In the 60s, they had just invented a pedometer. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. and in Japan. And they were trying to figure out like how to market it, how to get people to use it. And it turns out 10,000 is an auspicious number in Japanese oh. culture. So there you go. They're like, use it to get your 10,000 steps. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. <laughs> you're debunking it. I love it. Well, I mean, it turns out actually like it's a pretty good number. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it actually it. is a pretty good number if you can like shoot for that. That's that's a decent amount of um, exercise that's yeah. going to definitely benefit you. Yeah. Okay. But some, a yeah. little bit more than what you're doing. I mean, if you're already doing 20,000 steps a day. Okay then you're probably good. You don't need to increase it. But for many of us who spend a lot of time sitting in front of a computer and having meetings that are not walking meetings, mm -hmm. okay, a little bit more is more. Yeah. It's going to be good. You know, yeah. you're, you're going to feel better. Your circulation's going to be better. You're going to have the potential to up your creativity mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're doing mm -hmm. a walking meeting or just walking and thinking. You yeah. Know? Like this, and that's simple. Anybody can do that. Yeah. You don't have to do it fast. And I think I like that your point is like, you know, finding what works for you, right? Because mm -hmm. I think that I've tried a lot of different things in the past and I'm like, okay, that I used to love running and then my knees are like, nah, I don't like running anymore, right? Mm -hmm. And so I just, I started doing wall yoga now mm -hmm. and um, and now I incorporate it into my morning routine and I do, it's like 15 to 20 minutes of wall yoga and all mm -hmm. you need is a wall. <laughs> and a floor, like mm -hmm. preferably, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and that's it, right? But I know a fun fact about you, that you are an avid biker. And um, <laughs> you just did this huge race, what was it? Oh, it's been a little while back, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I did I did Rag Bri, Yeah. Which is a race all the way across Iowa, yeah. around 500 miles, it varies a little bit from year to yeah. year. But it's finding things that you're passionate about that right. you can incorporate, because I'm, 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 I'm assuming that that brings you joy, right? Of course. So bike riding might not be good for someone else, but for you it works, right? And so incorporating yeah, you, what, 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 what feels good and what you like. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, we haven't really talked about the food piece, mm -hmm. but it's a really big deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, so here's a fun number, and that is that Research in lifestyle and functional medicine has found that about 80% of the diseases that take out Americans, the chronic diseases, you know, the ones I'm talking about, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say them out loud, but yeah. we all know what they are, um, can be avoided with lifestyle. I okay? believe that, yeah. So, I mean, like, you're stacking the odds in your favor. Yeah. Um, if you can pay attention to that and create for your life a lifestyle that's going to support health. Right. I mean, maybe you need to get some help. You need the right team to leverage those odds, but the odds are in your favor. I love this. I love this. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with Amber in more tips and tricks on what we can do to really take back our health so that we can create the wealth and leave a legacy, right? Yes. Awesome. We'll be right back. I'm Jeffrey Bowling, owner and jewelry designer at Jeffrey B. Jewelers, Denver's number one jewelry design studio. And the reason why we're number one is because of our 3D custom jewelry design. We can show you what your piece is going to look like way before the end product. And this is going to give you the comfort of knowing you get exactly what you want. He took me over to the computer and we started drawing up exactly what I wanted. And then I told my husband, I'm like, Jeffrey B is the person we're going to use. And the other reason is that all of our gold and our diamonds are ethically sourced. So when you're ready to make that proposal, when you're ready for that legacy piece, go to JeffreyB.com and make an appointment. Because when it's love, it's Jeffrey B. We're back with Amber and I will say that I think all people know <laughs> that we should be taking health as a priority, but yet we don't, right? I mean, including myself, like there's been, I'm better at it on some weeks and not so great at it other weeks. And there's some go modes and things like that. But as businesses and entrepreneurs, like what do you think gets in the way of us truly taking that step into, 
you know, owning our health and making health our priority? Well, a lot of times, Terry, people need a scare. That they're, they're like, it's fine. Yeah, right? yeah. It's That's fine. It's true. I'm, I'm getting by. Yeah. Right? And if they have a health problem or a health crisis in somebody that they really love, mm -hmm. if they lose a friend, mm -hmm. okay, a lot of times that can be a big old wake up. Yeah. But it, sometimes it doesn't have to be that dramatic. Yeah. You know, is it okay if I just reference that story you were just telling yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So you were telling me that. You know, I was I was sharing a story off off air that we were we were I was talking about. There was a moment not too long ago. I was sitting in a, a networking event and I was trying to tag people for this photo. And I was looking at this lady and I was like, oh, I was like, what's her name? What's her name? And it, and I'm really good at names and faces. And I sat there and I kept going and I'm like, what's her name? What's her name? And it never came to me. And it was like, I don't know, again, 10, 15 minutes, because I was like, it'll come to me, it'll come to me. It'll come. And it never did. And so I ended up going to talk to a doctor, and he was like talking about my myelin sheath, which I didn't realize it's, it can be a, a precursor to Alzheimer's if it that becomes damaged or weakened or whatever. And mm. so I was like, oh, it was so kind of, and then he was able to you know provide the treatment and things like that, and it came back online, if you will. And I was like, oh my gosh. But it was one of those moments I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, like what? What is happening? And, yep. and that's something simple, but it could be, and I, I even think about just like the simplicity of being sick, right? Like we're not taking care of our bodies. We're, our body is like needing to shut down and it's going to get sick if we don't take care of it. And, you know, we can be preventative about it. Well, I think the thing is people tend to blow off their body signals. Yeah. Right, you did it. I used to, I, and I, you know, in all fairness, I'm throwing myself under the bus here. I used to, <laughs> I used to so what? badly. I did. What? I was like, what? But I am so now really in tune with my body and if i'm like i need to take a break i need to do yep. this i need to i need to whatever it is like i'm way more in tune with my body and i do listen to it yeah. um because i'm just trying i am becoming better at listening to my body right you, and you what made it needs. the shift yeah okay. yeah so this happens to all the time in my mm -hmm. practice mm -hmm. people come in and they're like i have been sick on and off for like X amount of time. And it can be an outrageous amount of time, yeah. right? And like, mm -hmm. I'm like, why didn't you come and see me? I don't know, four months ago, right? right. And it yeah, because they push to, it, we push it off. We they push, push it, it off, out, yeah. but well, they figure like, that's ah, fine, I'll just keep going, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I've had these headaches that have been mm -hmm. bothering me. Now it's been, you know, whatever, a, yeah. a year and a half, yeah. right? And I just thought like it would get better and I would push through yeah. and, and I, like how much better though, if you like, yeah. like you, right? Yeah. Or like you have the one scary incident and you're like, okay, I'm gonna pay attention, body's well, talking. And I think sometimes we, can, we don't even know. Like I think about when you said that, share that experience, I, I think about when I, I was a chronic insomniac and I didn't know it mm. because I, I had, I, I was a sleepwalker, I was a sleep talker. I, wow. I, I all my scars on my face are from sleepwalking. Wow. Uh, yes, and so I had all these things and I just never slept. And so finally at one point I was like, I'd say maybe this is an issue, right? Because I was getting up to between, you know, seven and 12 times a night. And I remember talking to my doctor and she gave me a pill that was supposed to make me sleep. I freaked out. I was in my early 20s. I freaked out. I called her and I was like, well, I don't know what you gave me. I think you drugged me. I'm not sure. And I was like, she's like, what happened? I was like in full panic. Like I'm calling my doctor. I'm like, I think I need to stop the script. Like it's something really wrong. And she's like, what? I, I, she's like, what happened? And I go, well, I went to bed and then I got up. And she's like, yeah, that's... I didn't have any cuts on my face. But I was I freaked out. But I had not experienced that oh, wow. as an adult. Wow. Like, ever. And it was such like a... like. But it, it was one of those things that I was like, I didn't know that I was, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And it was only when I was going into studying, you know, psychology that it's like, oh, like there's, there are, we're talking about all these different types of insomnia. I'm like, oh my gosh, I might have insomnia. <laughs> might. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Right? yeah so yeah. I think there's sometimes like we, we, we come we so disconnected with our bodies that it's like, mm -hmm. we don't even know that it's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that could be also an issue. Right? I, I think it's a huge issue, but like a, a, a there was one thing that I would really encourage people to yeah. do. Okay, walking meetings, they're cool, but even like more important and deeper than that. If your body gives you a signal, mm -hmm. right? like honor it. Like it's there for a reason. Your body's not your enemy, your body's yeah. your ally. If you get something that comes up, like it's telling you like you need to make a shift. Yeah. Okay, and if you can intervene fast, yeah. right? Like yeah. it will go away. But if you don't really pay attention to the problem, like it's, and, and worse if you like pound it down with what we call suppressive drugs mm -hmm. in the holistic world, mm -hmm. right? Where like the this, this symptom gets silenced, 
the body's gonna like often take it into a deeper part of the body, mm -hmm. okay? And you're gonna get another flag flying later, but maybe this time it's gonna be more serious and you're yeah. not gonna have a choice but to pay attention to it. Okay, sorry, I'm a little Mary well, Sunshine no, I today. Think, but no, I think this is so important. I think we have become so disconnected, this mind-body connection, right? And I think if that's a, a, a huge piece, is like just tuning into mm -hmm. when your body is giving you a sign. I like to, and you know this about me, like I always like to say, like, you know, my body, what is it that you're trying to tell me that I'm refusing mm -hmm. to hear? Because like it, your body is like now starting to communicate with you. It's like, okay, hello, it's whispering. And if you don't listen to that whisper, it's going to start screaming. And if you don't listen to that, then it's going to, and it, it could take you out, like, right? Like it, you know, yeah. or have you sit down or have you take you, you know, medical conditions that, you know, you're not prepared to take off a week or two weeks or three weeks or a month off of work, you know? And so. Or forever. Or forever. Yeah, true. I, I mean, but like what I love about what you just said is like, you are really looking at your body as an ally. Mm -hmm. And it can be, right? Yeah. It can be like a super powerful ally in business. If you've got your brain firing on all pistons, you've got the energy that you want, that you can put in the hours mm -hmm. you want for business, but also for fun, Yeah. right? And you're creative and you've got a good team around mm -hmm. you and like, it, it's beautiful. It is a beautiful thing and your body can be your absolute best ally. So let's see the statistics. I had some statistics for yeah. you, right? Yeah. So for people who, who report that it's hard for them to get out and exercise, there's something like 96% more likely to have to take time off because they're sick. Hello, there for, you go. Yeah, for people who say that it's hard yeah. for them to eat regular yeah. healthy meals. Ditto. Yeah. You know, like 93, 96% more likely to have to take time off because yeah. of their sick. Yeah. You know, so, uh, like it, it's, there's a business case. Mm -hmm. Okay, and here's, here, this is a big like global problem. And we talked a little bit about, you know, like the tendency of entrepreneurs to overwork yeah. and to get themselves into like a place where they're depressed or anxious or yeah. whatever, or just exhausted all the time. Yeah. Um, one of the easiest ways to address that is actually to take care of your body. Like you don't necessarily. Well, and it's, it's, I think entrepreneurs, and I, there's a stat out there, and I can't recall it, but like the amount of stress mm. that entrepreneurs um, have or yeah. get faced with, you know, yeah. I mean, so many times we, we, we are faced with the Shirley show and uh, <laughs> we can't even like, we're like, what is happening, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I do think that stress is a huge, a huge impact. In, stress has a big impact yeah. on business owners. And if we're not, sure. if we are firing all the time and we're in chronic stress, we're throwing, you know, the body, you know. So let's talk about stress management. Yeah. It's important. It's really important. So you already know this. Back to exercise again, right? It's a huge tool for actually helping your body to discharge mm -hmm. energy mm -hmm. that's built up and doesn't have any place to go mm -hmm. and makes you feel like your head's gonna explode, mm -hmm. right? It can be any kind of exercise. Mm -hmm. It does not have to be running. Yeah. It could be yoga. It could be stretching on your living room floor. It can be taking your dog for a walk. It can be weightlifting or bike riding or martial arts. Like, what is it? Skateboarding. During the pandemic, that was my, that was my. Uh, that's awesome. That's, that's what I learned. I, I learned how to, Roller, uh, roller, roller, dirt, roller what did skate. I just say? Oh my gosh. Skateboard. 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 Yeah, that, that was I, I, during the pandemic. That's what I learned. I'm sorry. I just had the whole video of you doing roller derby and like. Did you see me in heels? I did it in heels. Wow. Skateboarding on heels. Yeah, I did. Uh, you're, yeah. You're, you're something <laughs> but it special. Can be, it, it can be like, it can be whatever it is. It doesn't have to be something we think through. But I think you're right. It has to be on our calendar. It has to be scheduled. It has to be intentional yep. about making that commitment to ourselves, to our yep. health. Um, and the bottom, at the, at the end of the day, it's about our bottom line. It's I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, Darren. I have to put my meals on my calendar as a meeting for myself. Okay. I like it. Okay. Even the health expert has to ch schedule it. I have to. That <laughs> stuff it. comes up. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so so I, I think it's true for all of us, right? We, yeah. We've got busy lives. Like, yeah. And you, you, and then don't stand yourself up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Make a commitment to yourself. Yeah. Make a commitment to yourself. Like, yeah. you know how it would feel like you would never stand up somebody else that you had a meeting true. with. True. Right? I like that. I like that. Kind of guilt, you kind of guilt yourself in. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm oh, kidding. Like, I'm love kidding. yourself. Because yeah. I That's want to get true. back to that thing about pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the great thing about you and your skateboarding is like you liked it. Yeah, it, it was, was fun. fun. It was fun. It was it was working another. It was it was firing another. It yeah. was taking me away though because learning something honestly it takes you out of that something that you've already done for before. Mm-hmm. It takes you into a student mode. Takes you into a learning mode and you're kind of almost more engaged in it. So, you know, even like learning a new hobby or a, a new exercise or something like that is, is a fun way to engage the brain in a different way. Neuroplasticity is one of the great secrets to a long quality of life. Yeah. You know, and learning new things yeah. is very helpful Again, for that. it goes, always goes back to curiosity, right? Like curiosity. I love curiosity. Curiosity and pleasure. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, okay, I'm not talking about hedonistic, like, you know, for yeah, no yeah, purpose yeah. stuff, yeah, but yeah. like, these are our little clues, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like, you and know. Then, and I think these are the activated that activate joy, right? Yeah, right. I mean, I so you've, have you had a healthy meal, Terry? I know you have, where you're like, you eat it and you're like, oh my goodness, oh my, my body is so happy. You know what though? I have like, so you know, we always joke about like your last dying meal, right? Yeah, yeah. And so in our family, Terry has like 76 last dying meals. <laughs> so my daughter, the other day, she was so, if you're dying, do I have to tell the doctor that, like, sorry, she has 76 more days because she needs to get all of her meals in? But this is true. Like, I have, like, a whole, like... So this would be an easy project for you. I love right? it. I love it so I love, much. I love food. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, but here's another thing that people do, like, in the name of, like, trying to be healthy. Mm-hmm. They'll make themselves choke down, like, things that are gross, yeah. okay, that hurt their stomachs. Yeah. Like, they, make, they, feel, they feel tired yeah. after or, okay, maybe they're not doing it in the name of health maybe they're doing it in the name of like it tastes good yeah okay if you feel cruddy after like it's it's not serving you don't do that yeah i don't care yeah. what the label says yeah okay or what you read that it's supposed to be great for like if you feel bad like don't eat that that's yeah. not good for you yeah it's taking you down yeah and if you keep doing it it's gonna keep taking you down right because these things are progressive yeah the way that you can like whatever have your walking meetings make dates for meals breathe we didn't talk about breathing it's yeah. so obvious yeah. but it's a really juicy tool for stress yeah. management right and you can use breathing to bring your energy up you can use energy to like bring your nervous system down yeah right like these are really ancient techniques there's a lot of cool new research about them validating them using biometrics and that sort of thing but i mean set your timer for literally two minutes and breathe. There are cool apps that will help you do this. I so love them it. Free. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have to wrap up, but we could be talking about this all day long. What's um, what's a final thought that we can have for our audience? A final thought for our audience is that I would really encourage people to step into their power. Like eighty percent of this game is not your genes. Okay, it is your life, how you choose to structure your life. You you got this. You you again. You might need some help like a health coach, for example, or a homeopath to help you get things lined up for yourself. Um, If you don't know where to start, baby steps is is the key. Right. Perfect. If you try to like totally change your life all at once, it's yeah. unlikely to stay. Yeah. Right. Right. We have to build those habits. We you, have to, ha- yeah. you have to build things up and you have to find a place to, to start. Yeah. Um, but you know, like we, we've all got the power. Yeah. Right. We are not it. helpless in the destiny of our health. And that is the big takeaway if, that I would love people to get out of this conversation. If people are curious, how can people connect with you? They can go to my website, which is rockymountainhomeopathy.com. It's got dashes though. Rocky dash mountain dash homeopathy.com. Perfect. Yeah. I love it. And I've got a, a free book they can pick up there. They can become members of my association and get articles from the blog. And uh, I would just love to have folks join the community and uh, get some tools to step into their power around health. Love it. I love it. This has been absolutely delightful. Thank you so much for being on today. And as always, thanks for tuning in. As always, be bold, be brave, be fearless, be the magic of you. Massive love to all of you, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell to find out about my upcoming shows. Thank you for tuning in today, and I'll see you next time.